Batman gets to meet his biggest fan. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane toys. The new adventures of Batman, Commissioner Gordon, and Batmite. Playboy billionaire by day, Bruce Wayne's double life affords him the comfort of a life without financial worry. A loyal butler turned guardian and the perfect base of operations in the ancient network of caves beneath his family's sprawling estate. By night, however, he sheds all pretense, dons his iconic scalped cape and pointed cowl, and takes the shadowy streets, skies, and rooftops of Gotham City. Incredibly detailed, six-inch scale retro style figures based on the new adventures of Batman, designed with articulation with up to 12 moving parts for retro play. Uh-oh, Batmite. I'm sure Alfred will be receiving a call on the red phone any minute. Before, of course, we get a closer look at Commissioner Gordon and then little friend Batmite. He's not really so much a friend. He's more of a mischief. Let's grab the old tape measure and see how tall the figures stand. While I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of both Commissioner Gordon and Batmite. We can have a look at this review. Now, Commissioner Gordon's your standard size figure, so he's only going to be about 6 inches or he's going to be about 15 centimeters tall. Batmite, on the other hand, though, is quite small. And you've taken the tape measure to the top of his cowl. You're looking at the figure only being about two inches in height, or he's going to be about five and a half centimeters tall. So much for being the dynamic duo. Bringing in the earlier looked at New Adventures Batman, and of course, bringing back in Robin. You can see the two are displayed very nicely with Batmite. Although, unfortunately, though, Batman and Robin, while having articulation, a little limited at least to the tops of their thighs, they could at least say that they have articulation. Batmite is basically just a stacked figure. Other move, in other words, it just doesn't move. Bringing other figures, we've also had a look at from this wave. I wanted to bring Joker in, and I wanted to make him really close to uh, close quarters to Commissioner Gordon, not just to make him nervous, but also to drive home as well the idea that they look to be using a lot of the same molds between Joker and Commissioner. Other than really the jacket being different between the two, the arms, the hands, even that one can opener hand that he had on one side is carried over from the Joker. And we also just recently looked at as well the pink clad Riddler. So it goes without saying, of course, that Commissioner Gordon's one accessory really then is Batmite, because the figure doesn't have any articulation going for him. He was voiced in the series by Lou Scheimer, the same man who was responsible for making Filmation in the first place, and also notably voiced Orko in the Master Universe cartoon. You can definitely pick up a lot of Scheimer's voices, especially when you hear them in all the Filmation cartoons. He's always usually voicing one, two, sometimes even into like six or seven characters in the series. I think Scheimer actually, in fact, voiced a couple of characters in the new Adventures of Batman, but the one you'll pick up right away is always Batmite. The face sculpt on Batmite is quite good. Yes, he has no articulation. You can't do anything in the way of posability for this guy, but as it is for a rubbery piece, he does look good. He's painted really well as well. Mostly done here in purple. Big, large eyes. He's looking off to the side, so I think when it comes to displaying this guy on the shelf, I'll probably put like Batman on this side because it makes no sense if he's going to be over here. He's got a big M there on the front from Might, and again, he's got the nice little painted in gloves. Like For the guy's size, he actually is nicely painted. I think they've done a really nice job on him. Truth be told, I do wish that he had at least like a ball joint in his head. I mean, obviously that would have made this guy harder plastic than what he actually is. But for what he is, I mean, for what he is, he's not a bad figure at all. I just, in a way, also wish that he did have a peg hole, not two. He didn't necessarily need to have two, but at least he, if he had one. Because if you look at his feet, they're flat here, but they round at the end here, closer to the ends of his toes. Can you, can you see that? They, they curl right here. And I find it's just enough that it kind of makes them a little wobbly when you're putting them on the shelf. But if you can get him the balance, Batmite stands fine. On to now Commissioner Gordon, though, and stating already, the figure has same molded parts as, as Joker. Now, the thing about Joker, though, is that Joker came in clue with this very large, almost looking like if somebody needed to help uh, have problems, say, for example, opening a jar of pickles, Commissioner Gordon would be like running in, I, I've got the hand, I've got the hand for it. And he'd be good for, of course, opening up tight jars. But the hand just seems a little out of place here for, unless he had, for example, the receiver for the red phone, then you could justify why they gave him this specific hand. Uh, jokingly, at the beginning of this review, I ended up actually just taking Batmine and sort of sandwiching it into the hand of Commissioner Gordon not going to be the way I'm going to be displaying him on the shelf, but that at least gave Batmite a purpose. And it gave, I mean, Commissioner Gordon for the large size that he, size hand that he had, it gave him at least a reason for him having a grip like this. Without that, it makes no sense whatsoever.
Uh, the arms are going to be the exact same. Let's just bring back in Joker so you guys can see. Torso is going to be very obviously different. I mean, this is actually softer plastic here. So this just would have been a body piece that they would have over, put over top of the existing torso. But you can see like the hands are going to be the same between the Joker. The Clown Prince of Crime also shares the same sleeve. And top shoulder section with the same wrinkles. The lower legs are also something that's shared between the two. So they have carried over. They've got mileage out of their moles. You can't fault a company for doing that. Also has the same placement of pegs and has the same footwear. So there are a lot of reused parts here. The head sculpt for Commissioner Gordon actually does look really quite good. He resonates a little more like the Commissioner Gordon we would get from the 66 series. He doesn't look at all really like the Commissioner Gordon we would have got from the 69 animated series Batman and the Boy Wonder, Robin and the Boy Wonder. That that Commissioner Gordon actually had red hair. And I swore, swore to you, I could swear to you, that he actually spoke like Chief O'Hara with a little bit of an Irish accent. But for the figures, head sculpt is really quite good. You got a little bit of mustache there that's been painted really nicely. These glasses appear to be ones that are removable. So if you did want to take them off, I don't really know why I would really want to take off the glasses for Commissioner Gordon. If I took them off and decided later I want to put them on, you know I would never be able to put them on the right way again. Kind of like taking a prize out of a cereal bag and then try your best as a kid to put that bag back in the box. And of course, you know, the box kind of looks like this. It never works. I would never really want to do that with Commissioner Gordon. But it does look like if you wanted to, you could take the glasses off. They are black framed glasses with no actual lenses on them. So it doesn't distort at all his eyes. You can see his eyes are nicely painted inside there. Sporting a, what, 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 the silver fox. Is that what they called an older man? A silver fox? Is that even something we can call people anymore? Silver foxes? He has, I mean, in a way, he kind of looks a little bit like Tom Atkins. Thrill me. Nice head sculpt, though, for what it is. And again, like the body is basically just a gray suit, gray sleeves. The uh, the actual sleeves, for obvious reasons, this is a harder plastic, this being a squishier, softer plastic. The two colors are close enough, but this is clearly a little more of a matte finish than the more shinier plastic that they used here for the arms. But all in all, like, not a bad-looking Commissioner Gordon. He still retains sort of more the limited articulation, at least when it comes to his thighs. So, you, yeah, you sadly can't split them out. But what he does have, at least as possession, is a ball joint in his head. So you can rotate the head all the way around. Moves it up and moves it down, back and forth. He already beats the Batmite by one point of articulation, but he does more. He actually does also have hinges in his shoulders, so you can bring those arms out as well. You can take those arms and rotate them all the way around. Both sides, yeah? Okay, both sides. We'll do that on both sides. Figure does also have a hinge in his elbow that allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. Hands rotate also all the way around. He has, again, like Joker, he has that one kind of fist hand, and then just strangely, he has this kind of, again, jar opening hand. The figure has a waist swivel, even though it's really concealed underneath the jacket. Again, the legs can only go forward and back this way, so you can't split the legs out. He has a single hinge only in the knee, but allows at least the lower leg to rotate. And he doesn't have any articulation again for his feet. So with most of these figures, if not all these figures, these figures have not had any articulation in the ankles. I mean, I don't think, I don't, from what I remember, I don't think Robin even had it either. Speaking of Robin, back, bring back Robin for no other reasons than just the fact I was just finishing talking about Robin. Bring back in Batman. Yeah, I like the look of these figures, and I'm glad to see that Commissioner Gordon on his own would have still been a fine figure and a fine addition to the Batman New Adventures of Batman cartoon collection. But the fact that they also throw in Batmite, Batmite would have been just one of those odd oddities that I don't think he could have just put in on his own. I mean, obviously, he would have had to have been part of probably like an accessory pack. At the very least, they probably could have also packed him along with Robin because he's a slightly smaller figure. But I think Commissioner Gordon was also a smart choice, too, because if you didn't, if you were a little on the fence as to whether you really wanted to get Commissioner Gordon as part of your cartoon, like I said, your cartoon collection, Batmite sort of is the nudge in the right direction of saying, OK, well, you know what? You also got Batmite. And some people might just say, OK, well, that's I even have more reason not to pick up the figure. Or some people would be more the greater would say, hey, all right, we get a Batmite, at least part of this. I don't want to pick up the, the Commissioner Gordon based on that. I like to look at Commissioner Gordon. I mean, again, he looks more like Commissioner Gordon from like the 60s live action series. He doesn't look at all really like Commissioner Gordon from the 68, 69 Batman and the Robin Boy one and Batman and Robin, the Boy Wonder. That's a bit of a tongue twister where he had completely different look. He had like red hair. And I don't even know really what look they were kind of, I guess they were basing it more on the comic book at the time. But Commissioner Gordon for me, like he looks more like the live action Commissioner Gordon. And that's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon, you seem to have your hands quite full with Batmite. Judging also by the size of that one hand, that's quite the tall feat. The hand really did need some sort of an accessory. I don't know whether it would have been just a red receiver from the red phone, or if he could have included like a mug that said Gotham City's best commissioner 10 years straight. Something just to justify the reuse of that hand. I get the whole idea that they want to use the forearms and the upper arms from, from Joker, but at least give him some justified reason why they want to use this hand again for Commissioner Gordon. Now, he does also come include with one accessory, if you want to call it that. 
comes with Batmite. Batmite is more an accessory than he is an actual figure because there's nothing really at all that moves on him. That might be one thing that sells the idea of collectors who are maybe on the fence about getting Commissioner Gordon. Hey, at least we do get ourselves a Batmite. Other collectors may just look at this and say, well, I was on the fence really for wanting to get Commissioner Gordon. And the fact that they even include Batmite, that just means it's a total pass. Don't let him be a pass. I know there are certain characters that get introduced in cartoons, TVs, and films that always seem to be the most annoying aspect. Like, the series was fine on its own, and then you had to jump the shark, as they will. That, that's a reference to the happy days where they introduce a new character, Luke from Growing Pains, Leonardo DiCaprio, his opener, kind of his introduction to Hollywood. I mean, a lot of people would think of Scrappy, Scrappy-Doo, as sort of one of those annoying characters that never needed to be in Scooby-Doo. Honestly, I always preferred Scooby-Doo without Scrappy. But ironically enough, Batmite didn't bother me as much as Scrappy do or Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks is another introduced character that everybody just sort of thinks is he's the one character that ruined the franchise. What other characters can you think of? I mean, getting a little off the beaten path here. What other characters can you think of that ruined something by their introduction? It could have been a character like in a cartoon. It could have been in a movie. Is it maybe Scrappy Doo? Did you like Scrappy Doo in the Scooby Doo series? I'm all over the place. Uh, certainly getting, though, back on track. I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample. A really nice-looking Commissioner Gordon. I really like the way that this guy came across. He comes a little across also like Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. But also the fact that we did get ourselves a bat might, hey, that's, that's something. But again, what do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comment section. And yes, let me know. One of the most annoying characters you can think of that was introduced into a TV, a movie, a cartoon series. Be interested to see some of the ideas that you guys come up in the comment section down below. Uh, also as well, hey, if you guys did enjoy this video, I want to hit a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly do want to stick around for more, I'm surprised that, by the way, Batmite hasn't fallen over. I thought with him rotating on a rotisserie like this, great, now I've, now I've just jinxed things. But wrapping things up, though, we are still going to be looking at two versions of Batgirl. One, the regular gray and blue outfit Batgirl. And then we're also going to be looking at the black outfit Batgirl. Might end up just doing that as one review, simply just because, again, like it's the exact same figure. But to make sure that you're not going to be missing out on that upcoming video, first of all, if you did like this video, want to hit it a like. But if you love the content and you want to stick around for more, subscribing is always the best thing. Also, turning on the bell notification is also a really great thing. And always letting me know down below what you guys think of these figures. I always like the engagement of having you guys let me know what you guys think of these. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.